Hello, and welcome to Social Workers Rise, where we inspire social workers to connect, expand their knowledge, and change more lives than they ever thought possible. We will talk everything social work on every level from micro to macro. We are going to hear stories of social workers who are doing big things, learn new skills, and most importantly, give you actionable steps to make a difference today. Let's go. Hello, Angela. Hi. Hi, Catherine. Hi. Welcome to the Social Workers Rise podcast. I'm so excited to have you on. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yes, of course. I I have been seeing you around on Instagram and I've always, you know, wanted to learn more about travel social work, but I really never knew, you know, where to go or who to ask. So mm-hmm. when I saw you and you're coming out with a book, I was like, oh yes. my gosh, this is my <laughs> chance. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm so happy about it. Oh my gosh. So Let's start from the beginning. How in the world did you get involved with travel social work? Did you have to have like a special degree or certificate? How does that work? Yes. So I found out about travel social work just doing the online search because um, I was working um, at a hospital at the time and I was kind of feeling a little, just a little overworked, underpaid. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, there have to be some other opportunities out here. So I, I just searched diligently until I came across travel social work. Um, so I completed the contact information on the website and a recruiter reached out to me. Um, and he told me that I, I needed to have my MSW, which I already had, um, and at least a year of medical social work experience. So I came up with my plan. I was like, I'm going to work here at least a year to get the, get the experience. And then I would start traveling. Um, So for travel, yeah, you absolutely need your MSW, at least a year of medical social work experience. And a license would help as well. Not all assignments require it, but it can make you more marketable. Okay. Yeah, because the job list, the few job listings I've seen for travel social work, they do want LCSW. So I can see how it'd be a little bit easier to, to get started with your license. Yes, for sure. Um, When I started, I had my MSW in Alabama and Maryland, um, but my first three assignments were in California, and they did not require a California license, but it helped that I had a license. Yep. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, So, okay, I'm trying to, like, wrap my mind around this. So, you get hired, right, and they say, hey, we want to send you out to California how long are you are you on these um, assignments? <laughs> assignment, yeah. I was like, I don't think it's a mission. But... <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It feels like it sometimes. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> so the assignments are usually thirteen weeks. Um, so my first assignment was thirteen weeks, and they asked me to extend for additional thirteen weeks. Um, my second assignment ended up being six months. And then they asked me to extend an additional six months. So I ended up staying a year. But yeah, typically 13 months is the amount of time um, the assignments are. 13 weeks? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. 13 weeks. Sorry. Three months, okay. 13 weeks. <laughs> yes. I see. Okay. And then when you're over or when you're on um, assignment, do they pay for your housing or any kind of expenses? Yes. So with your assignment, you have the option to accept a housing stipend, which is non-taxed. Um, and you get that every week when you get paid, which is a perk of travel. You get paid every Friday. Um, but you also have the option to accept um, company housing. Um, if you would take company housing, your take home will be less because they will factor that into your package. On my first assignment, I allowed my company to provide housing for me in San Francisco because it's expensive Mm -hmm. and I didn't know the area. I was like, I don't want the stress of trying to locate housing. So I allowed them to provide the housing for me. And it was great. They put me in a really nice apartment right by the beach. I was um, in the Pacifica area. um, So I could walk out of my apartment. I'm right there. 
That's I amazing. Like, oh, I know. It was so amazing. And I just could not believe it. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I get to live here and work here. Like, it, it was something for sure. So I would say it just depends on the location of your assignment. If you would like to, you know, locate your own housing or if you would want the company to provide it for you to kind of take some of that stress away. Okay. That makes sense. And, and I imagine it sounds like you got really lucky <laughs> with your first <laughs> assignment at San Francisco, California. Yes. I imagine not all of the assignments may be that nice. Have, have mm-hmm. you ever had to go somewhere where you were like, Meh, I don't know about this place. Right. Yes. Um, so my first three assignments were in California, different parts, and they were all pretty great, except Stockton. The assignment oh. was nice. I enjoyed my coworkers. They were so sweet. Um, but, you know, it's not much to do in that area. So I would have to drive to, like, San Francisco or Oakland on the weekends to kind of hang out. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I also had an assignment in um, La Plata, Maryland, which is a small area. It's about an hour hour and a half south of DC so it wasn't much going on in that area so I would have to drive into DC to um, actually have some fun on the weekends right yeah so it kind of depends you know if you want to take an assignment in a larger city um, or you want something you know in the small town area but you have options for sure Mm -hmm. how much how, how much of a choice do they give you So basically, when you connect with the recruiter, um, you can let he or she know that, you know, I'm interested in Texas or I'm interested in Houston, Dallas, certain areas. And they can say if they have something available in those areas for you. Um, If not, they can let you know what they have. And if you're interested, they can submit you for the assignment. Um, Yeah, but you can let them know if it's a certain state or city that you're interested in. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And I usually recommend having more than one recruiter because say one agency doesn't have something available in the area that you like. You can try reaching out to a different agency and see what they have available. Okay. And how do we find these agencies? I would say you can do a Google search, you know, internet search. Um, But also we have a lot of Facebook groups now. Uh, for travel social work so you can join um, the groups I have them listed in my book and also on my um, Instagram page but you can join those Facebook groups um, and recruiters post different jobs like every day they're posting Um, and people put recommendations in there um, regarding their recruiters so you can reach out to them so there are a lot of more agencies um, providing travel assignments now than when I started back in 2016 I only knew of like two or three agencies and now it's so many. Okay. Wow. So you've been doing this a long time. Yeah. Time has been flying by. <laughs> you've just been traveling the country. That's amazing. I know. It's, it's been a great. I cannot complain at all. And that's why I just want to, you know, help other people get into this field because they message me and they say, oh, I didn't know travel social work was a thing. Like everyone tells me that like, it's a thing. It's real. You should come into the field. <laughs> yes. I know. I wish I I wish I knew about it when I was younger because now I have a family and a mortgage and yeah. it's just, it's harder now. But if like, I mean, right out of grad school, like no responsibilities, I would have been all for it. Yes. Yes. It's, it's a great field. It offers a lot of flexibility. Um, so, but I say you can travel too with kids and families. It just depends on you know, what type of lifestyle you want to live and like your overall support system too, when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So what is your typical schedule like? I mean, I guess it depends on where you are, but yeah, what's your typical schedule like day to day? Um, so um, pretty much most of all of my travel assignments, I work Monday through Friday, um, like eight to four 30. Um, It it will depends on the assignment. So if you take an assignment, maybe working in the ER, you may have the option to work 312s or 410s, something like that. Um, But most of the assignments I've worked are like Monday through Friday. Um, And I work my assignments three months at a time. Um, And I usually take a month or two off between assignments. 
just to spend time at home. Um, I have a PRN job at a hospital in my hometown. So I work while I'm at home and until I'm ready to take another assignment. Nice. That sounds awesome. Yes, I do enjoy the flexibility because I'm like, oh, I need a break. I'm yeah. Take, take some time off. <laughs> or even while working an assignment, um, just making sure like if you need some time off that is in your contract before you even start the assignment, you can have those days put in your contract to be off. So that's oh. a good thing, too. Yeah. Yeah. So if you needed to fly home for a special weekend or something. Mm-hmm. It's already approved in your contract. They can, you know, let the agency know that you need to be off X number of days. Oh, you know, wow. Approve it. Yeah. Nice. Yes, so, yes. so how much are you getting paid on these assignments? <laughs> it varies um, just depending on if you're going to take the housing stipend or not, or if, um, if they provide you a rental car or not as well so they t- um they factor all of those things into your package so it can range i'll say on the higher end you can bring home about 25 2600 a week after taxes depending. that's really good yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm doing the math in my head i'm like wait that's like that used to be my monthly income <laughs> yes yes same same here <laughs> For sure. So yes, it's, it has its perks and financially um, it can be great, you know, paying off debt and just overall changing your lifestyle, being mm. able to vacation more. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So we talked about a lot of really good stuff about travel social work. What would you say is the most challenging part of travel social work? Mm, I would say just starting a new assignment, you can have like those first day jitters because you may have a strong skill set, but you know, every place is different. So just trying to get acclimated to one area that you're living in, as well as the hospital (laughs) that you're working at, um, that can be challenging sometimes. And then having to pack up and leave uh, frequently, Mm -hmm. that can be a headache. Um, but I would say overall, the pros outweigh the cons for me. Sure. Mm-hmm. Hey, it's Catherine here. I hope you are enjoying this episode. We're going to take a quick break to listen to these ads from our sponsors. Do you want to make your own podcast? Spotify has a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere and even earn money all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, and this is the platform that I use because it makes it so simple to record and distribute your podcast all in one place using your cell phone. What you need to do is download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com backslash podcasters to get started. If you're planning to take the BBS Law and Ethics exam, the ASWB master's or clinical licensure exam, or if you're studying for the MFT exam, then you need a proven program that can help you understand the exam questions and pass with confidence. If this is you, I highly recommend the Therapist Development Center. I personally use TDC to pass my law and ethics and clinical exams and found the program provided me with everything I needed to pass with confidence. TDC's program integrates various ways of learning in an organized fashion, containing all of the information you need to pass without the overwhelm. And now, bonus, TDC is also offering a library of continuing education courses that fulfill your license renewal requirements and will support you in your career development. If this sounds like something that you need, visit their website, therapistdevelopmentcenter.com and use the code SWRISE10 at checkout to receive 10% off any of their CE courses, including their brand new course, On the Edge of Life, an introduction to suicidality. You can also check out the link in the show notes. 
Have you ever gotten pushback from employees because you're new or temporary or have, have your coworkers mostly been welcoming? I would say um, I've had a great experience with um, all of the assignments that I've worked. They have been super welcoming and just helpful um, because they want you there for the most part because they're short staff. So it's like, yes, come help us. Mm. <laughs> Thank you for being here. You know, so um, I have not had a bad experience of, you know, being iced out for being a traveler. Okay, that's good. Yes. Um, Have you ever had to, or I'm thinking about the topic of uh, when hospital social workers or employees go on strike. So Mm -hmm. have you ever been filling in for during that time or would you or you know what do you think about that yes I know it can be very controversial um I had one strike um back in 2020 and it was it was an interesting experience so it was a five-day strike um and so I was like in my book I have a list of like agencies if that is something that you want to do as far as work working um strike assignments I have a list of those in the book, um, but it pretty much depends, you know, on you. Like, do you feel comfortable stepping into that role or not? Um, but I can say that overall, I felt safe working the strike because um, I know that can be a concern as well as safety. So, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause there's, I mean, we can, if you're comfortable, we can talk about the controversy about this because we have a lot of uh, newer social workers who may not understand uh, what they might be getting into. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I've just seen on social media, some people say, well, you can't call yourself a social worker, you know, if you're working the strike and it can get pretty ugly for sure. Um, and I, I, I understand because we want better pay, we want better benefits. So you have to take a stand when it comes to these things but then on the other end you know patients still have to be seen and taken care of as well so it's it's a tough tough situation yeah so if you do decide to work a strike just know people might be mad at you Mm -hmm. uh they might call you call you a scab yeah so just be prepared (laughs) if you're if you're willing to to go into that venture just be prepared for that it's you know we don't want any surprises around here (laughs) for sure and I mean I don't know if it's something it it wasn't something that I just broadcast out like I'm going to work this strike right I just kind (laughs) of keep it to myself (laughs) because it is it can get crazy Mm -hmm. so but yeah those opportunities are you know available um And it can, they, you have to have flexibility too, because the recruiter may hit you up and say, hey, the strike is going to be next week. Are you available? We will fly you out this day. So if you're working like a full-time job or you're on assignment, then will you be able to take off, you know, Mm -hmm. to work that, um, work that strike. So yeah, it's very last minute. That makes sense. Yeah. Because you don't typically know about strikes super far in advance Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely so it is something to think about okay um so I really want to hear about your book what tell me about your book is it like a story is it tips is it what is it tell us um I will say that is it is more so tips I, I tell a little about my personal experience of course but I wanted it to be a guide to get you into this field like I have a note taking section so you can take notes as you're reading the book. Um, so I have um, sample contracts, sample skills checklists, um, packing list, note taking guys like once you're on assignment, things that you want to take note of. Um, also, just tips on self care. Oh my gosh, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot in there. Um, just overall, the criteria that you need to start the process, um, building your um, portfolio. So you need to make sure that you have your updated resume that's highlighting your medical social work experience. Um, start thinking about references. 
um, because recruiters will reach out to references before you can start an assignment. So just making sure that you have reliable people to provide that for you. Um, Even just making sure you have your shot record, um, CPR, make sure you're certified in that area. So I have a list of things that you need to have to start this process. Um, And as far as like me providing coaching, I just want to provide support to travelers because I know how it can be starting this and not having someone to kind of answer questions for you because when I started in 2016 I didn't know any other travel social workers so I felt like I was on my own I was trying to do online research but really couldn't find anything I had to kind of look into travel nursing resources um so now that I have this experience I want to be able to share that with others that's great I love that what what inspired you to write the book I was just home. I started writing this in January of this year. And I was just like, wow, you know, people, they send me messages on um, social media and they have questions. I'm like, why not put something out there for them to have like a guide? Because I would have loved to have that for myself. So I just started jotting down different things I would have wanted to know as a traveler. And it really just went from there. I love that. That's that's where it starts. I love that, Angela. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very excited. I think it's going to be super helpful um, for social workers wanting to get into this field. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> get you a job. I have a job. <laughs> yes. Our skills are needed on the road, um, especially like during this pandemic there are so many um, travel assignments available now because we are needed. Yeah. Yep. It's true. And it seems like organizations and companies are starting to recognize that now Mm -hmm. that, Oh shoot. If we had a mental health professional here, it'd be a lot easier on our nursing staff. Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, there's, there's just been so many times where I'll check back in with the nurse and they'll say, you know, how'd the visit go? And I say, oh, you know, I just, um, I let them talk and I let them vent. That way you can do your job a little bit faster. And they're like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Exactly. <laughs> it goes a long way. A lot of them, they just want to be heard. So mm-hmm. just being a listening ear, oh, it helps so much. Yeah. But it- yes. Yeah, it helps the patient, helps the nurses, helps the doctors, because everyone's on the same page. They have social workers to vent to and to process everything with and to understand. And then if there's more education needed, then, you know, we're able to say, hey, you know, we just need more clarification on this particular part, not the whole thing. Yes, Um, yes, for sure. And then just overall being the problem solvers. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Sometimes I feel like, they say, oh, we don't know the answer to this. Oh, let's find social work. Yep. But <laughs> we're like the jack of all trades. They may know, you know. <laughs> yep. I think I recently said that to somebody because they they commented. They said, oh, I didn't know you do that. I said, yeah, you know, anything that's not traditional sur- nursing, you it's probably social work. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> that is so true. Yep. That's <laughs> awesome. So. The other thing I was wondering is how does the licensing work? So if we have our MSW um, and we decide to become a travel social worker, is there a way, can we get our supervision Mm -hmm. during these assignments? Yes, you can. Um, That was a concern of mine when I started traveling because I I knew I wanted to travel, but I also wanted to get my clinical hours for my LCSW. And I'm like, oh, how am I going to do both? I'm like, I don't want to delay travel because if I keep waiting, it may not happen. So I decided to take the travel route. But um, on my second assignment, I met a social worker there and she said, I can do your supervision for you <laughs> for free. I'm like, wow. <laughs> I know. I know. And it, it worked out because I ended up being there a year. Then I, I left because you can't stay to, at an assignment over a year without being taxed because they okay. don't consider it. Uh, a travel assignment I left and I came back and worked another year there so I was able to complete like my hours with her but if that's not the case for everyone um I would say talking with your supervisor so that you can get virtual supervision 
Because as long as you're, you know, working in a clinical medical setting, you should be able to get your hours okay. from there. And the other thing that I thought of is there's the new RISE directory of mm-hmm. clinical supervisors. I don't know if you've heard of it, but I would imagine that if you go onto the RISE directory, you could probably find somebody in the state that you're going to be travel um, on your assignment in mm-hmm. and see if you could find someone to get supervision that way if the company can't offer it. Yeah, I definitely think that could be an option for sure. Um no, I think that's that's a great option for um, travelers to look into. And the other thing that I was confused about is if you get licensed, say, you said you're in Alabama. Mm-hmm. So if you get licensed in Alabama and you go to another state, is that other is your license still going to be valid there? You have to do um, the application to get like reciprocity. Okay. In that state. So, um, cause right now I'm licensed in Texas, Maryland, Alabama, and DC. So it's pretty much been the application process. You have to get your, um, scores sent over from the, um, from ASWB to the licensing board. Um, sometimes they want, you know, proof of like your supervision, so you have to get that sent over to them. So it's just the process. And I talk about that in the book as well, things that you would need to um, to become licensed in different states. Okay, awesome. Did you, did you make more money when you became licensed? Um, I just think over time, I just started taking assignments that had a pay increase. Okay. I would say that, but... I would say for most assignments, I don't, I don't know if a license would make a difference with the pay mm, as far okay. as having the LC versus like a LMSW um, licensure. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. So for those who would be interested in getting starting, where would, where would they go? Like, who do they talk to? How can they even get started? I would say one, just making sure that they're meeting that criteria um, as far as having the medical social work experience and feeling like they are, they have a strong skill set in discharge planning if they are wanting to take assignments within the hospital setting. Because there are other assignment types, like they have home health or, you know, working in behavior health or even working in school social work. So whatever area you're wanting to work in, just making sure that you have that experience and you feel strong in your skill set. Then I would say from there, making sure that you're like joining the Facebook groups, like travel social workers, Facebook group, you have like travel case management, Um, join those groups, kind of see what they're talking about, see what the recruiters are posting, Um, follow my page (laughs) Um, and start building your portfolio like updating your resume, getting your references together, um, getting the items that you would need. So once you connect with the recruiter, you can get those items to them. They can start building your package so they they can start submitting you to um, different assignments. Um, Also having a date in mind that you would want to start because most of the assignments, they want you to start within two or three weeks. So you want to make sure you have some type of date in mind, a game plan. Like, okay, if I'm going to start next month, what's the day I will want to start? Because the recruiter wants to know that so that when they send your information out, they can say this person can start there on this date. Um, but yeah, just kind of shopping around, talking to different recruiters, ha- having an idea of where you may want to take an assignment. Um, if you want to be proactive, you can start applying for a license in that state. Um. Because agencies, some will provide reimbursement for your license. So that's something to think about. Mm. And kind of going from there. Yeah. And I imagine, too, this would be helpful if you're planning to even move to a different state. Mm -hmm. Because if you can get a travel social work job in another state, it allows you that time to get established, to figure out the resources, and to search for a more permanent position. Yes, for sure. It can help you kind of figure out what you want to lay roots at. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even just bouncing around, you may say, wow, I really like this city. I like this area. I can see this being my new home. I mean, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So, um, so for your coaching program, for people who are just getting started, how are you able to help them? So right now I've been offering like free 15 minute consultations to kind of get an idea, well, answer questions and get an idea of, um, where the social worker may be in their career. Um, and also I have a social work readiness assessment. So I would have them take the assessment and we can kind of go from there to say, okay, seems like you may need a little more experience or you may want to consider, okay, if you need more experience, you may want to consider getting a PRN position in the hospital or how can we go about reaching these goals so that we can get you to a travel assignment. Okay. And um, just also just providing that support th- to them throughout the process. If they want to go over their contract with me, um, overall help finding housing, I can put them in the right direction as to what websites to look to look into, or if they're trying to, you know, get a hotel, making sure that they're talking to the sales rep there and things to say um, as far as that. It sounds like that would just alleviate so much stress and save so much time for someone Mm -hmm. who's looking to just get started. Yes, I hope so. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's the plan because I know it can be so stressful and overwhelming, especially if you feel like you're in it by yourself. So I'm like, I don't want you to make any mistakes that I may have made. Let me be able to support you throughout each process Mm -hmm. until you get to where you want to be. Right. That's awesome. I love it. Love it. Love it. Thank you. Where can people find you and get in touch with you? They can find me on Instagram at Travel Social Work Coach. Also um, on my website, which is um, astcoaching.net. I'm on LinkedIn, Angela Thompson. And I also have a Facebook page, um, Travel Social Work Coach. Um, so if they go on my Instagram, they can go to my bio, my link tree to schedule a free 15 minute consultation. And that's also available on my website. Awesome. Well, you heard it straight from Angela. Go and get your free 15 minute consultation. (laughs) Let's talk. (laughs) Yes, she will take care of you. Thank you so much, Angela. Is there anything that we missed or anything that you feel is important we should add? Um, Just overall with the book, it will be available December 7th on Amazon, um, and I will have that link available on my website and on my Instagram page. Yes, and all of these links are in the show notes, so check them out. Check out Angela's links. Check out the Facebook groups. Get in contact with her and schedule your consultation, Um, and let's, let's get more travel social workers out there. Yes, you are needed. Yes. Come on over. It's good over here. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you so much, Angela. I truly appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Take care. Bye. You Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of Social Workers Rise. If you love this episode, be sure to subscribe and text this episode to a friend. If you want more, there are a few ways we can get to know each other and work together. First, definitely subscribe to the Friday resource email list. The link is in the show notes. And that's where you can learn more about the courses I offer, including clinical essentials for the future therapist and the Pulse Basics for medical social workers. I'll also be sending out occasional tips and resources and other happenings within the social work industry. And for all your clinical supervision needs, be sure to visit risedirectory.com. This is a national directory of clinical supervisors for social workers, and we also provide free resources that you can use within your own clinical supervision. Lastly, if you have more individualized needs, I do offer coaching, individual consultations, and am available for public speaking engagements for social workers and change makers. Lastly, the boring legal stuff, but very important. The information in this podcast 
is not meant to be a supplement for therapy, professional advice, or clinical supervision. This content is provided as is solely for informational purposes. It is not legal, health, or safety advice. I am not advising you as a therapist. Organizations should engage their own experts to ensure any adoptive measures are compliant with applicable laws and standards in their jurisdictions. The opinions expressed by individuals or organizations are their own and do not reflect the views or opinions of Social Workers Rise or Catherine Moore. References to specific products or organizations do not constitute any endorsement or recommendations by Social Workers Rise.